דוקטור יצחק דרימר, hello to you. אולטימייט מדיסין, ניו קאמינג בוק, לקצ'רס, אראונד דה וורלד, and your medicine center. If you could share how, from your perspective, did it all begin? So, the first question is, what is a real doctor? So it took me a while to understand that to be a real doctor is to understand that you give your patients tools. First of all, you understand them. After you understand them, you can see how you can help them and you give them the tools to help themselves. And now, how much tools do you, how many tools do you have? How many tools you have as a doctor? So if you are a medical doctor, what are your tools? What are your understandings of the patient? Your patients. If you are a chiropractor, What are the tools that you have to understand them and to give them answers? Mm -hmm. Is it within your scope? If you're a psychologist, if you're a psychiatrist, if you're a biochemist, if you're a phar pharmacologist, if you are a Chinese doctor, Chinese medicine doctor, if you're an energy healer, treater doctor, you, what is your understanding of the most complex uh, creature on earth, human being. So my training was in chiropractic through pre-medic, through pre-medic uh, and medical uh, schooling mm -hmm. and then chiropractic schooling which has all the variety of everything within the conventional medicine except two things, you don't do surgery and you don't give pills. But I ended up with very few tools. Even though that you've learned in the universities in the United States, yet few tools? Few tools only. So when you come to that perspective of a patient that is all around, from his psychological being, from his physical being, from his biomechanical being, from his uh, systems, how the system works, where they can go wrong, how they can go wrong, why they would go wrong. And if they're not wrong, how are you going to enhance them, to create even more potential within that human being? Then we got into a big, big, big mess today, which the conventional medicine is running the show with very, very few tools. Pills, surgery, pathology, nothing else. You cannot run health systems with working only with disease or with accidents or with correction. So it brought, it brought me to a point to understand that if your only tool is a hammer, everybody that will step into your door, into your clinic, must be a nail. Otherwise you cannot touch that guy or this woman or this child. So I, After a while, I understood and said to myself, that's all. That's all I have. These are the tools that I have after so many years of schooling. So then I start going and thinking about what would be the next step and the next step and the next step. Until it took me to understand that if medicine, if to treat people, to treat patients, would not be with full understanding of his soul, his biochemistry, his biomechanics, his um, energy, his environment, his genetics, earth, and everything that is going on around him, you will give him only a partial answer or at all to his condition, problem, disease, fears, fractures, whatever you want. It's not going to work. That's why today we have very fancy boxes of candy and that we improved from year to year, which means that's the cover of medicine, but inside there is a rotten candy from very long time ago. They just created different boxes 
for the same idea. Wow. So medicine ever, all around, in all kind of medicine, grew to the width with knowledge, not up. So they just improve another pill, they just improve another knife, they just improve another machine. But there was not a climb up in understanding, in conscious understanding of what is the human being and how you can touch him, how you can hear him, how you can create within him the change from sickness to health. The next point, which is very important, what is sickness? What is pain? What is fear? What is this coherency? There are only messages. They're nothing but messages. Therefore, you want to understand these messages that your patients are coming with to you. Which means, they're coming with fear, with pain, with disease. You're not dealing with the end results only. You want to understand what's the causes. Why they're getting what they're getting. Why they're having what they're having. And if you're not going there, you cannot give them solutions. Are there any in, those, in that specific box of a, a original Western medicine that you, you've shared a, any good candies that you you can see that maybe people can say okay there are much more candies in that box that should be as part of the ultimate medicine though these are some good roots medicine which is the base for everything conventional medicine is excellent it be, the me medicine built all the bases for the rest of us mm -hmm. to develop with understanding with excellent lab work with examinations, with understanding very good anatomy, physiology, pharmacology. They came with excellent materials. In the past, the medical doctor was a real doctor. He would talk to you. He would touch you. He would understand you. And only then, only then, if he could give you something, he would do that. And sometimes he didn't need to. Because he knew that what he's giving is also very limited. And also, they came with a notion of germs, which you cannot see them, so they're not existing. They came with, with notions with um, x-rays, MRI, CT scans, which are great. You can see into the body. You can work with the labs. So they gave excellent base. However, they forgot the human being. They forgot the patient, they became more technologists rather than treating human beings with understanding of the technologies. They got into the technology so much, they forgot the human being. So they spend them with a very short time, they don't understand them, and then they treat them, and sometimes the results are not in favor. I, I don't want to say more than sometimes, but it's at least sometimes are not in favor of the patients. Though they, they um Western doctor that would have sit here and reading your uh, coming book would have said, well, that's the business model of the hospitals and uh, you've been working also with uh, uh, in hospitals and with uh, uh, in Israel with Kupot Cholim. So you know that there's a lot of stress of seeing each patient for, I don't know, eight minutes, six minutes, five minutes, 12 minutes, but it's otherwise uh, they, they wouldn't have uh, uh, enough uh, uh, patients to create their own business model so that's why you create why i created ultimate medicine ultimate medicine first of all you need to remember one thing why did you go to med school why did you go to osteopathy school why did you go to chiropractic school to naturopathic school homeopathic school chinese school dental school veterinary school why did why did you go there to help people you go when you went there from Deep in your heart that you want to help people and animals. It depends what type of doctors. Through their teeth, through surgery, through, through everything that you know about medicine. So the first thing first, don't forget who you're serving. You're serving people. That's why you, that's why you went and spent a lot of time, a lot of money, to serve human beings in the most need. The most need. They're not coming to you happy to a party. They're coming to you because they're afraid they're in pain, they're sick, and they're sick also 
information about what they have. They want you as the expert to tell them how you can help them with what they have. Do you know what I have that you can help me with what I have? Or you need to send me to somebody else or you need to do something else with me. So doctors forgot that. Now, it's not really the doctors that forgot that. It's the systems that runs them. Systems that runs them forgot that and they start making a lot of money through that and it's, it's a prestige with a lot of money. Forget it. You deserve money. You studied long time and you deserve a pay for what you do. It's great. Do, do that the best, the best, the best you can. So if you're touching human beings and you must do it the best you can, you need to see the minimum of 30 to 1 hour, at least on the first visit, to understand them all the way around. And once you understand that, the basic, this is just the basic, and you start sending them to lab work or to um, uh, x-rays or CT or MRI, whatever you need for that patient or psychological evaluation, only then you start to understand from which area of their needs you're going to give them answers. And if you're not an ultimate doctor, which knows psychology, what you know, the nervous system, chiropractic, nutrition, biochemistry, if you don't know energy work, you cannot touch this person. Because not that just you're going to harm him, you're going to delay his treatment and his healing and his needs that he came to you with full faith that you're going to help him. That's why I developed Ultimate Medicine. That's the base of all of that. Now, is it enough ultimate medicine? It's not enough either. We will we'll need to, in cooperation, develop that deeper and deeper and deeper and higher and higher and higher. So what are the basic milestones that you're sharing throughout the, your lecture, throughout the book? So the first thing to understand when I'm sharing through a lecture is medicine, conventional medicine, is very, very, very important. If somebody thought that it's passed away and it's not anymore in use and it's um, not relevant anymore, not relevant anymore, forget it. It's very relevant. It's a base of everything. There are excellent doctors that are doing immense, immense service to humanity in emergency. They know how to do the best in surgery in. In every work that is included, mm -hmm. emergency. They're doing it great. Nobody does it better than them. And if somebody thinks they're not relevant, he's making a big mistake. It's a disservice to your patient. Patients. The next thing, which a lot of people didn't understand, is how you run your energy through your spinal cord, through your spinal column, through your joints. And chiropractic, osteopathy are excellent types of medicine that have been developed very deeply and with very deep understanding how to work with the body through its musculoskeleton to, to influence our whole health. It's not just the pain of your neck or your, or your low back. Once you influence the nervous system through your spine and your joints, through your muscles, through your connective tissue, you give an amazing opportunity of transferring information between your brain and your body through your joints and your spinal cord. So this is a very, very, very powerful medicine. It's a medicine, it's a medicine less medicine, but we'll use it as a, in a general term. Mm -hmm. The next thing is human psyche. Human is so complex. If you don't understand, or at least try to understand, his psyche. What will lead him to his sickness? What will lead him to his pain? What will lead him to his a fear? What will lead him to his discoherency? You cannot treat a person. Because the first thing you need to be is a very good psychologist when the patient sits in front of you. If he's a child, and I had, I had uh, this week I had a child that came in after he comes back from his kindergarten and he's creating hell at home. And I asked him, What's happening at school, in, in the kindergarten? 
tell me what's happening there. Yeah, they change the teacher and she's very rough and she doesn't take this. And, and the child started responding to that. So they didn't know what to do with the child. We treated the child in a different way than the usual case. But we brought the parents to understand and the kinder and the teacher. That that's not the way to deal with this child. So, and this is just a child. Yesterday I had a, a woman came in to me and she said, I was stabbed in the back with my employees. So she gave a metaphor, an analogy, and she came with a very severe low back pain. Mm -hmm. But she told me why. So did I deal with her with the chiropractic tools? No. I dealt with her with the psychological tools, with immediate psychology, to explain her, listen, okay, I understand, everything is good. Let's see what led to what. And then when she was finished with that, and we worked with a little bit with what we called psychophysics, then she was okay. She said, you don't need to move something to give me something? Any take pill? Something, any pill to put something in my back? A cream or a, a needle? No, you don't need to. We understood what brought you to that and then we gave you the, tool, gave you the tools to deal with that and you were okay. Another milestone that you, you will be sharing throughout the lectures and in the book. Also? Biochemistry. Food is the biggest drug, it's, it's the most addictive drug, let's put it this way, in the world. Today, human beings are spending more money on drugs and food than ever in the world. So up to not long ago, it was food, and now it's drugs, and now this combination of these two are lethal. People are eating not to sustain themselves. Mostly the eating because they have a need or they are lacking something. And they're eating wrong most of the time. And they don't understand why their vehicle, their body, their mind cannot function correctly and accurately within the fuel that they're feeding. Feeding it. So when I sit with a patient and he tells me that he has constipation, and he's eating the junk that he's eating for such a long time. And I show him the correlation, which I have no idea. But he, and then he said to me, but I like that. I said, yeah, but it's killing you. So you're actually digging a grave with your spoon all the time, every day a little bit more. So the doctor must understand the correlation. I have, this lady came to me after she had a mastectomy. They removed both of her breasts by surgery because she had cancer. When she got out of the hospital, they gave her a diet to keep. Now, when I looked at that diet to keep after having cancer, both breasts, what they have on the diet there will create the same problem that she had before. Wow. And they, like, they don't understand that. So I showed her, explained her, and I, we changed what she's eating. So her, bio, so her genetic, genetics, mm -hmm. Air and whatever is creating that tumors would not be fed but what is wrong to activate these genes to her dismay and not to her health. So Another milestone that you are sharing in the lecture, in your course, in your book? One of the biggest milestones is quantum mind medicine. Quantum mind, mind medicine. medicine. The whole world mm -hmm. is actually found in a vibrational frequency. Everything in the world is in a certain uh, a vibrational frequency. Everything. We are creatures that are built from atoms like everything else. So we are run by energy because atoms are 99.9999% energy, information, and space. And very little matter. But that matter is run by a vibrational frequency. Each one of us has a very specific vibrational fre frequency, which I called redir, which means redir is like the word retet and redir in the in which means it's your human energetic 
cosmic signature. You are being fed by invisible light that carries information, energy that carries information, that activates you to life. It's called human, energetic, cosmic signature. Is outsource that meets in source. Our brain is converting that energy and information to biological energy and information. And the ultimate medicine can influence that radio, can influence this cosmic energetical um, um, being? That's exactly what we do. So if you are frequentized, mm -hmm. your frequency and your vibration are correct. That, by the way, your radio, your frequentization is mm -hmm. only yours. You are the only one that can receive it on earth and be activated by that. Everybody has its own. And it's coming from a source that we don't, we don't have the correct name. It can be the quantum field. It can be the cosmic field. It can be the God field. It doesn't matter. It's coming from a field and feeding us and sustaining us until this body have no use. So if you're frequentized very close to who you are really, you will be never sick, and you'll never be sad, and you'll be very wealthy. Not necessarily just by money. But you'll be in existence of bliss and happiness all the time. It doesn't matter what will happen around you. You will run the show. As long as you're frequentized, and you're getting away from your frequentization, your redel, the sicker you become. So here you might have a sore throat, but here you might have cancer. Wow. And you might have MS. So what we do, we're frequentizing you back to your most potential. Now, how do we know that we do that, we see the effect on you when you're coming to us either very sick or little sick or a little afraid or a lot afraid or a little depressed or a lot depressed and after we frequentize you back to yourself you see the change within you and how you sustain it and now how you become more and more aware of that people are not aware that they are being run by the frequentization by their human energetic cosmic signature. You are a signature. That's why you appearing as you appear here on earth and you are behaving as you behave. Are you attracting others or are you uh, repulse are you repelling others? Mm -hmm. Are you repelling life or are you attracting life to you? As more you frequentized, the more you are in your potential of your frequentized of your energy and information. Now, these milestones, these chapters of the ultimate medicine, who, from your perspective, are the captive audience that can learn that? Are there common people? Are there people that uh, want to help others? Are there a kind of therapist or doctors? or simply people that are suffering a lot and they are looking for a new treatment? First of all, should the, the first thing is that the first university in the world will be belto developed to certify you as an ultimate health provider doctor. That's the first, which means that you're going to go, to go through training that will make you five doctors into one. Only then, you are an ultimate health provider doctor and you're really an ultimate doctor to your patients. Only then. So the first step will be that. It's to develop the new university within ready ones or ex existing ones or new ones that will develop that new upcoming doctors to the world. What we have now as a disperse of only conventional, only chiropractic, only homeopathic, only naturopathic, only this and this and this, that's not enough. It's good and you need to keep them, by the way, because you might need only that, only that and only that. But the first base, basic understanding is first the ultimate doctor. Then you can send them whatever they want to send, to be sent and what, for, for what they need. Not every patient will need all varieties of schooling or treatments to his problem. But the doctor that they sit in front needs to understand all of them. The 360 degrees. Must. So, 
that's the base of everything now. If now your son or daughter, you were wishing for them to go to med school or chiropractic school, forget it. First you go to ultimate school, ultimate medicine school, mm -hmm. health providing school. And then if they want to... Come into your course. Exactly. And if they want to become specialized in something else beyond that, that's okay. But that's a base. That's a real base. The base today is too low. Only med school. Only chiropractic school, only old, only naturopathic school, only it's too low of a base. It's old. It's not enough. It's good. It's not enough. So that's the first thing. Then every ki every child, every anybody, any any person, healthy or sick, need to be frequentized every once in a while. Must. Animals are being frequentized. When we touching, we frequentize the animals. You should see the response is amazing. They're doing it just like human beings, and they love it. Horses, cows, dogs, cats, they love it. You can do it on a fish in an aquarium. They come close to you. It's understanding the new medicine. It's understanding of who we are. We are entities of information, true energy that creates material. Information, true energy that creates material, not the other way around. People that are seeing that and we want to be part of your community of the ultimate medicine, just click here and be part and join in the website to come and join your course, to come and join the next episode, the next chapters of your new coming book. Dr. Itzhak Drimer. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you.